God of War development is going strong and the community is also doing amazing work. Let me show you 10, maybe a bit more, incredible add-ons for God of War. Bullet hell, procedural generation, physics, level design and more. These add-ons will help you, that's for sure. Bullet hell games are awesome, but handling the spawning of these hundreds of bullets can be a pain. Don't worry though, as Bullet Up Hell by Dark Peace will help you with that. You'll have access to custom nodes to handle the spawning, lifetime, patterns, size, direction and target of your bullets. Fun fact, this add-on was originally developed for the first Godot add-on jam. Alright, as a bonus, let me throw in perf bullets. If you're making a truly hellish game, you might have performance issues handling thousands of bullets. Fortunately, with this add-on, you can push the limits even further. Using Multimesh Instance 2D to render bullets and C++ to handle the logic, you can clearly push the limits over 9000. That's the power of GD extension right there, allowing you to use C++ and distribute your add-on easily without forcing the user to do any compilations themselves. Speaking of GD extension, I have to show you Jolt by Mihe. It's a drop-in replacement for Godot's 3D physics using the Jolt engine used by Horizon Forbidden West. Download the add-on and install it in the add-ons folder, restart Godot and choose Jolt Physics 3D under the physics engine in the advanced settings and that's it. You now use the same nodes as before but Jolt is handling the physics behind the scene. Jolt is much more performant and stable than Godot's built-in physics and again this was made possible thanks to GD extensions. Huge congrats to Mihe for his work. You like the bonus add-on I gave you right before this one? Let me throw in Box2D by Apps in a Cup. It's another drop-in physics replacement, but for 2D this time, using the famous library Box2D, which is used by Unity for example. Again, this extension is super easy to use and brings more performant and stable 2D physics to Godot. Just look at this test to see how much better it is. Make sure to take a look at the limitations with both of these add-ons, as they are still work in progress. Gaia by BenJTK is an advanced procedural generation add-on, and when you look at the list of contributors, it seems it can only be a good one. With this add-on, you can use different kind of generators, such as cellular, heightmap, and walker to create diverse and rich levels, caves, and landscapes. You can even tune the result to your liking using modifiers, and finally render everything using the built-in renderer node. How convenient. That's not even all, they also provide a chunk loading system, making sure your game will run fine, even with a huge world. I wanted to quickly say something about how you present your add-ons. When I make these videos, I see lots of add-ons, and even if I wanted to focus on content more than form, I have to admit I'm biased towards well-presented add-ons. If you want to attract people and make their life easier, create a nice and clean readme, explaining what your add-on does, how it can be used, and don't hesitate to add a few screenshots. If you can, also add a video. An image is worth a thousand words, so I let you imagine what a video is worth. Gaia is a well-presenting add-on, so you can take inspiration from its readme. Back to the list. Godot introduced soft bodies some time ago, but only for 3D. Fortunately, with soft body 2D, you too can create squishy eggs, aspargases, and cheese blocks, I guess? Bodies can not only be deformable, but also be breakable. The readme even shows you how the soft bodies are computed. That way, you learn stuff, but you don't have to make it yourself. Jelly car clone in Godot when? Let's breathe a little with a smaller yet still amazing add-on, Concav Mesh Slicer by PyCode9560. You know Fruit Ninja? Well, with this add-on, you can recreate it super easily. You create a mesh slicer and then call Slice Mesh, and that's it. The function returns an array of sliced mesh. It's that easy.
This video was made possible by patrons on Patreon. If you want to get access to videos early, get exclusive content, discount on future projects, and more, consider supporting me on Patreon. If you're not decided, you can join the Patreon for free to get notified about the free content and stop relying on algorithms. Join us at patreon.com slash mrelliptic. Phantom Camera by Ramox aims at replicating what Cinemachine for Unity can do. With it, you can control the movement of 2D and 3D cameras and tween their properties easily. It comes with many interesting features such as camera priority, different follow mode, zoom, look at, and more. There's an example scene to show you the possibilities. It's really feature-packed and I'm sure you'll find it useful for your 2D or 3D game. Add-ons are sometimes adding features or even fixing stuff that should be in core. An animation player refactor by Pucom One is one of those. It's pretty straightforward. It allows you to refactor an animation, to rename tracks and properties or delete them, change the root node, mark invalid properties and node with full undo redo support. If you've ever tried to refactor an animation, you know how painful it can be. And hopefully this add-on can fix that. I'd suggest to also add the ability to copy tracks and refactor them at the same time. That will be helpful when you want a similar behavior on another node or property. Building and blocking out levels in 3D used to be slow and painful, but not anymore thanks to Cyclops Level Builder by Black Ears. You start by adding a Cyclops node to your scene, and you're ready to place and edit blocks. You have access to many primitives, which all have collision by default to allow you to interact with the level. You have lots of quality of life features to place, rotate, scale blocks, snap them to a grid, etc. The tool lets you also assign materials and manipulate UVs. There's even a demo video showing you how the tool works. Definitely worth checking out. Managing sound and music can be a pain, but Nathan Hode is here to save the day again with Sound Manager. The add-on provides pooled audio players, music crossfades, auto-detection of probable audio buses for sounds and music, separation between UI and local sound, and finally, both GDScript and C Sharp. What else would you want? To finish this video, I want to showcase Metroidvania System by Kobiwi, an appealing new general purpose toolkit to create Metroidvania games. It can be used to create maps, navigations, collectibles, and even a basic save system. The tool seems utterly useful if you're trying to make a Metroidvania, and you can check the sample project to get an idea of how it works. If it's not enough, don't worry, you can read the very descriptive documentation on the GitHub page. Kobiwi is always behind interesting add-ons, but this one seems to be on another level. While researching these videos, I come across a lot of interesting add-ons, and I'm thinking of doing a topic-specific video. UI is often something people don't like or find hard to grasp, and I thought making a video showcasing add-ons aiming at making UI easier could be interesting. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Thank you for watching, have a great day, bye!